Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Mid-Atlantic Molly League. It is the Blood Bowl number three here in the league. Oh, Clypheus, thank you so much. And thanks for being a, both a, a member of the league and a subscriber. Thank you very, 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 very much. Oh, it's me, Beaver. Thank you for the sub. 31 months. We've been doing it that long, have we? My goodness gracious. Well, we're about to cap off uh, season three here with our third championship. It is the third Blood Bowl in the league. We're going to kick off game number one with the runners up final. This is uh, otherwise known as the lower bracket. And boy, this man, <laughs> this is going to be a wacky one tonight. We're going to have the Mootland Scout Troop number 079 versus the Knights of Nuffle, Artificial Bunny versus Clyphus, Halflings versus Brett. Oh, man, Halflings. <laughs> you know what? Not so trusty patches. That is apropos. Well done. <laughs> Let's take a look at this bracket before we look at the two teams. Here in the upper bracket, here in the third Blood Bowl, Blood Bowl number three, we've got three teams in the upper bracket. As always, these are the three champions this season. They get seated randomly, and the way that shake has shaken out is El Nuberino's Masters of Mammal. They are going to take on uh, Sweet Bunnies. That's kind of catchy. That's going to be a Dark Elf Mirror match in the upper bracket. The Dinnerbell Darlings, a Dwarven team coached by Doug the Minotaur. They'll be facing off against the winner of tonight's game. And then, of course, in the lower bracket, that's where we are here. Just two more teams qualifying for this Blood Bowl. First up, the Mootland Scout Troop, number 079, coached by Artificial Bunny. This is a halfling team, my goodness. My goodness, they're going to be up against the current league champion, Clypheus, and his Knights of Nuffala Brett team here in this lower bracket final. Again, the winner will advance to the upper bracket to play the Dinner Bell Darlings. The loser, that's going to be the end of their season, but what an ending it will be. Coming in fifth place in the entire season is not a bad place to be, especially if you're a half league team. <laughs> First up, the home team for this evening, Artificial Buddies Mootland Scout Troop number 079. They're coming in at a TV of 840. Uh, seems pretty low, but that's where halflings want to be. They want to be low. 13 players on this roster, two halflings, everybody, two halflings, two treatment, and everybody else is a halfling. He has two team rerolls and a fan factor of six. <laughs> Not so trusty patches and SP Beaver. Thank you for the bits. <laughs> we'll talk about this team in just a second. They're going to be up against Clive's Knights of Nuffle. We haven't seen them since the Spike Magazine trophy. Was it the Chaos Cup? No, it was Spike Magazine trophy. Uh, TV of 1480 this evening. 14 players on the roster, but two are injured, bringing it down to 12 who will start this evening. He has three level four blitzers. He has three blockers. Everybody else is a is a peasant lineman. Three team rerolls, one oppo, nine fan factor. How do the two teams play this evening? Well, the home team, the Mootland Scout Troop, the first order of business for Artificial Bunny is going to be to pick up those inducements. He is the home team this evening. Again, that was that was by by random draw, so he lucked out there. Being the home team, we're going to be playing. What is this place called? Ah, oh, Camp Moot Lake. Of course, of course, we're playing at Camp Moot Lake, and he's going to have that Nuffle Altar to make his star players 50k cheaper. That means he's going to pick up. He's going to be getting 400. Uh, oh no, 640k in petty cash, and. He's going to, oh, not so trusty patches. Thank you very much for the bits. Um, he's going to be picking up uh, uh, Deeper Strong Branch for 250. Absolutely. Probably going to pick up Zara the Slayer as well. Um, this is going to give him money left over for that very, very uh, critical uh, Halfling Master Chef. That's going to be 100K as opposed to 300K. And it's going to give him a little over 100K left over. Maybe a, maybe a little bribe. A bribe would be lovely. <laughs> He's got two treatment and everybody else is the halflings. As you can see on this halfling roster, they are very weak with the strength of two and they are very brittle with an armor value of six. They're easy to remove from the pitch. You're going to roll lots of dice against them and you don't need a whole, you don't need a, <laughs> you don't need a very big number to break their armor. <laughs> he does have three leveled halflings, which I find absolutely disgusting. He has one who is a blodger. That's Timmy Jr. He has Josh the halfling who has sure feet and then he has sneaky get on Chris, Scout Leader Sycamore is the rookie. 
Treeman, and he has a level two Treeman in Assistant Leader Twiggy, who's picked up the guard skill, a pretty good pickup for a Treeman, as the Treeman are gonna tend to stay grouped up at center pitch. Uh, having guard on one is going to give that guaranteed assist. Uh, six strength is huge. AV10 is as good as it gets. Both have mighty blow, both have uh, stand firm, both have strong arms. His game plan tonight, in, in a little bit of a twist, right? A Brett team is a pitch control team, but Clive isn't, doesn't really need to play a, a pitch control game this evening. Instead, it's Artificial Bunny who really needs to control the pitch this evening. Uh, those halflings, the name of the game for him is to keep them alive as long as possible. That is it. He wants to keep them alive while pushing down pitch. The, the bulk of that's going to be done by his Treeman. His Treeman line, he's going to have three trees on the line. He's going to have Deep Root as a star player with a strength of seven, and then the two strength six Treeman on his roster. They move very, very slowly. They only have this MA of two, and they're only, probably only going to move one a turn because they're going to be marked one turn. I'm sorry, one space a turn. Move very slowly down the pitch, control mid pitch, get as far as you can. If you can score with the run, great. If you can't, it's time to fling a fling. He's going to pick a half lane up with an available Treeman and try to toss him in the end zone. The closer he gets to the end zone, the easier it's going to be. Remember, passing is one of, if not the riskiest action you can take in Blood Bowl, and even more so when it's through teammate. Uh, so he wants to get as close to the end zone as he can. That is what Artificial Bunny wants to do. Clypheus with his Knights of Nuffle team. This is typically a pitch control team. You can see he's got Russell and Guard on the blockers. He's got Fend on the linemen. He he wants to leverage these people, uh, these people, these players typically to control the pitch. But tonight he's a bashy team. He's got the strength advantage. He's got a bunch of Guard on players. Uh, he's got Dauntless on the Blitzers and block on the blitzers. Blitzers, of course, are, are his his best pieces. He's got three of them, one of which is injured, unfortunately. He can take four. He wants to smash these halflings into the ground. He wants, them, he wants to remove as many halflings from the pitch as he can. He does have another option with these blitzers. He does have Dauntless on the blitzers. That means he's gonna take his strength, he rolls a d6, he adds that. If it is greater than the strength of the opponent that he is blocking, then he can treat his strength as equal to that opponent. And what that in turn means that if he can succeed on his Dauntless roll, one assist will give him a two die block. He could use that to his advantage to try to take out a Treeman in a critical moment of a drive. That could be very important. Artificial Bunny is going to have to watch out for that. Clypheus, very solid coach. He is the league champion. Both of these coaches, in fact, all five of these coaches, they're in the Blood Bowl. Very good coaches. Clypheus has uh, proven himself being the, the league champion. He's come back with this Brett team. Uh, Brett is uh, fine, <laughs> uh, but really, Brett is not a top tier team. And yet here he is with this team in the Blood Bowl. Artificial Bunny, Halflings, not a top tier team. Here he is in the Blood Bowl. They're going to have to work outside the box to make these teams work. They've done that so far. They need to continue to do it tonight. It is a single elimination bracket. That means one loss and you are out. Clypheus needs to bash. He needs to make sure that Artificial Bunny doesn't take away crucial parts of the pitch away from Clypheus where he needs to score. If he can do that, he's going to have an easy time of it tonight. He's got a bunch of guard that's going to help him to bash down these opponents. He does have to watch out for those, uh, for those inducements. I don't know if Artificial Bunny is going to pick up a wizard or a bribe. I imagine it's going to be a wizard. A bribe would be really funny, though. He does have the sneaky git. Um, but we'll see. Clyphus really, really, really needs to be careful of those inducements. That Master Chef means that Artificial, I'm sorry, Knights of Nuffle are going to lose rerolls each half. They can lose up to all of them in the half. So that's going to change the way he plays. When you don't have a reroll available to you and you're talking about the variance on a D6, that's a huge difference in probability. So Clyphus is going to be to be very, very careful. If the dice don't go his way with the chef, he's going to have to play differently and he needs to have a plan in mind, a strategy in mind for both options, his sort of normal bashy options with the rerolls and his secondary options when he doesn't have the rerolls and the odds are now very, very different. All right. Both coaches are in Discord. So why don't we head over to Cabal TV and get this first game of this championship underway.
boy, oh boy. 640k in petty cash in this inducement phase. That's a lot of money, but not a whole lot of money when you talk about a halfling team. Again, he can pick up Deep Root. Typically, Deep Root is 300k. He can pick it up for 250k because of the altar of Nuffle El Nuvarino. 22 months! Thank you very, very much for the sub. I greatly appreciate it. Um, Zara the Slayer, not a bad pickup for the extra strength. She's normally 270, so she'll be 220. El Nuvarino, El Nuvarino is not playing. I was, I was so happy with the sub. I just typed his name in. <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll see what the weather is like for this first game. But man, if it's sweltering heat, we're going to be in for a great, a great tournament. <laughs> we'll see. No clear skies for this game. Master Chef only stole one reroll from the Knights of Nuffle Artificial Bunny. Probably not too happy about that. The Moot with three rerolls for the half. They did pick up a Wizard, and of course, they've got the star player Deep Root Strongbridge. They didn't pick up Zara. Instead, they picked up Puggy. Puggy with a strength of three. He's a blodger. He has nerves of steel. <laughs> Speed Beaver says, is that a wizard I see? It is indeed. Calypheus with the Knights of Duffel setting up on defense. Three man defensive line, two in either wide zone. In the game of Blood Bowl, you have to put. I could have sworn I had an overlay. Let's see. All right, let's try this again. In the game of Blood Bowl, <laughs> you have to put at least three players in one of, in in three of these seven spaces right here at middle pit, at mid pitch. You can put up to two in either wide zone here. That's the, uh, these big rectangular sections. And everything else is a fair game for a legal setup. If you have a kicker, which, Clypheus does right here. He can't be on the line and he can't be in the wide zone or else you can't kick with him. Blood Bowl 2 does have a bug as well where if you set that uh, kicker up illegally, <laughs> whoever kicked first, if he's still on the pitch for the following drive, your kicker will not be used. The kicker that was, or the, the player that was used in that first drive will will be used to, to kick. So you really have to be careful in uh, in this version of the game not to set up your kicker incorrectly. Elder Arena says, I hate Puggy. Why do you hate Puggy? What a fun little dude he is. Puggy with a strength of three. That may not seem like a big difference between uh, a two and a three, but that is a huge difference. Three being the average in this game. Here's the kick. Knights of Nuffle kicking pretty shallow. Oh, and it's a riot. We're gonna, oh, boo. <laughs> We're gonna be down a turn in this game. We're gonna start off in turn two here. Ball kicked very shallow to the opposing six yard line. We get the game started with a block by Deep Root Strong Branch. It's going to be a push result. It is not the Dungeon Bowl final, it's Blood Bowl 3. Oh, wow, fails a take root roll on the very first turn of the game. Spends the reroll to keep from rooting. These big guys in the game of Blood Bowl, the big guys, uh, typically have some sort of negative trait associated with them, uh, some skill that's a, a penalty for for their increased strength and, and uh, resilience. For the treatment, that is called take root. Before they take an action, they have to roll a D6. If they roll anything but a one, they're good to go and they can take their turn like normal. If they roll a one, however, they are rooted in place, meaning they cannot move for the rest of the drive unless they're knocked down. Elden Green says Fen could be huge against those trees. That's right. Fen means you can't follow up. 
these treatmen, if they're going to remain marked, they're not going to be able to follow up. They're not going to be able to move. <laughs> Dead Freddy says, trees always root first turn. <laughs> you just have to hope for a better second drive. Moolin Scout Troop picking up the ball. Another, <laughs> another rooted treatman in this version of the rules. This is based on the Living Rulebook version six. In this version of the rules, you only get one team reroll per turn. Oh boy. Oh boy, Knuckle, he has been removed from the pitch. He has a smashed ankle. Doug the Minotaur, thank you for the sub. Thank you very, very much. Let's go half leaps. <laughs> so let's uh let's 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 talk about what happened here. So this treatment rooted. So that treatment was in place, took the block, took the both down result, meaning that both players would get knocked down. He got the injury out of it, so Knuckle is out for the rest of the game. And because the treatment got knocked down, he is no longer rooted. So he has saved this treatment from staying in place with that both down result. <laughs> Poopal says injury and no root. That's a that's genius with a J. <laughs> Dead Freddy says, <laughs> now that tree will never stand up there lazy. <laughs> so in Blood Bowl, if you are prone to stand up, it costs three points of movement allowance to do it. You can see the tree men only have two. So if you don't have enough movement allowance to stand up, you have to roll a D6 to stand, and it's a 50-50. If you get a four plus, you'll stand up. Otherwise, you're going to stay lying on the ground. <laughs> Breaks armor here Ooh. on the Blitz. Gets a stun on Derek. Very good stun. Has a mark on the ball carrier now. Two rerolls for each team for the remainder of the half. Clef is closing in on this offense. He wants to mark as many people as possible. Remember, he's playing as a bashy team against these halflings. They have a strength of two, and they have an AV of six. So they are, he's going to, uh, Clefius is going to get two die blocks, maybe even three die blocks against them. And an AV of six means he just needs a seven plus to break armor on a 2d6 roll. So playing as a bashy, a bashy team, at least in, in uh, this matchup, he wants to take as many marks as he can, and hopefully he comes out on the next turn taking a number of blocks. Still needs to keep a little bit of a secondary behind just in case there's a cheeky halfling toss. Artificial Bunny playing this halfling team in the Dungeon Bowl took it all the way to the finals. Lost that uh, championship to El Duberino's Masters of Mammal. But that is how Artificial Bunny qualified this team for the Blip Bowl. Turn three now for the Moot. Most of their players marked here. They've got Deep Root available, and they have Assistant Leader Twiggy over on the right side of the line available as well. However, he is prone, failed the stand-up roll. He's not going to re-roll that, and so Assistant Leader Twiggy is going to stay on the ground. <laughs> Boot Polish says, safety's for the peasants, apparently. <laughs> All right, throw, throw in the ball carrier. Here's that toss. Ball carrier is not going to land on his feet. Wow. Wow. Gave the ball to Puggy. Puggy is a star player. He is a loner. All star players have the loner. Uh, the loner trait. That means if you want to spend a team reroll on them, you have to roll a D6 first. You need a four plus in order to use the reroll 
otherwise you don't get the reroll, but you still have to spend it. Tossed Puggy down pitch. Tossed Puggy down pitch. Didn't land on his feet. Got through the loner roll on the reroll. Ended up on his feet, and now the ball carrier is on the opposing 20 yard line. Oh, bad stun there. All right, turn three for the Knights of Neville. I think it has to be a GFI Blitz here. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. GFI Blitz and another GFI if he wants to get a two die on it. Here comes the first player. The GFI, there's the assist he needs. A blitz with Rit. Got the pal that he was looking for. SP Beaver with the emergency GFI warning. He got through the GFI, injures Puggy. He is out for the game. Goodbye, Puggy. That is Petty Cash gone. Great blitz by the Knights of Nuffle. Good attempt by Artificial Bunny there to try to get away. Another injury here, this time on Quartermaster Georgie. He has a smashed hand. That's three gone, right? Two gone. Breaks armor yet again here. Gets a KO. That's another removal. But this one, not permanent. This is what you got to do to the halfling. You got to smash him into the grass. Two die block with the blitzer. Gets a knockdown. Doesn't break armor this time. Blitz is spent. A blitz is a once per turn action. So you can't blitz anyone else. Life is containing this halfling offense. A decent number of removals there on this turn. Three removals. Puggy was a big removal. Puggy with that strength of three, he's gone. The rest of the halflings only have a strength of two. Thirty-five seconds left in turn number three. The Knights of Nuffle with one reroll remaining for the half. Had to spend one there on that blitz. Turn four now for the moot. What does he do now? What is the game plan now? You are on offense. This is your half to score. You've lost the ball. You don't have a ball carrier anywhere near the ball. And you're very, very fragile. What do you do? You can't really run away. He's been contained by this, by this defense. Failed stand up by that right end there. Number two, the, the Treeman staying on the ground for another turn. El Nubrinus is tossing their halfling? Perhaps so. Perhaps so. Looks like he's going to do just that. Deep root with strong arm. Here we go. Lands on his feet. Well done. He passed Josh, the number four halfling, down pitch to the 10 yard line. But now what does Josh do? <laughs> Dead Freddy praised to Nuffle. I feel like that's your answer to what do you do? <laughs> Under a minute here to play for the moot. Going for the ball. Wow. What a it's a five plus pickup here. He spends the reroll. Doesn't get it. Ball's gonna scatter scatter backwards. That's gonna be a turnover. Artificial bunny. Didn't see any other options there. He went for the ball. 
Didn't work out. Tough grab there. Tried to go for it. You got to, right? It's the Blood Bowl. If you lose, you're out. <laughs> Dead Freddy says, Nuffle alone can save the halflings of this drive. But he's up against the Knights of Nuffle, although the Knights did have the audacity to put a K in front of that. <laughs> so maybe Nuff maybe Nuffle won't, uh, won't take too kindly to that. Two die block gets the pal. KO's Josh. That's another halfling out. Four removals, three man player advantage now for the Knights of Nuffle. Doug the Minotaur says, start fouling and remove them knights. Three die block now. Both standing result. If you have the block skill and you roll into a both down result, you actually don't get knocked down. Both players had the block skill, so they're both going to remain standing. <laughs> Speed Beaver says the knights need to foul the trees. <laughs> Three die blitz. Gets a push result out of this. He's going to chain push Davey into Timmy Jr. and push Timmy Jr. one space back. Blitz has been spent. He has another block on Davey here. He can make it a three die if he wants. And he wants. Here comes the three die block against Davy. It's a dodge push out of this. He's going to chain push Jim, uh, Timmy back. Great chain push here to get another block out of this with number number one. Only gets a push result this time. Number one has tackle. Tackle negates dodge. Would have been useful on a defender stumbles result. Said he rolls into a straight push. Three plus ball pickup works out. Homage, the number eight blocker. He's going to pick this ball up on defense and run down to his own 10 yard line. Speaker says, "Is are there just three halflings left? No, there are. There should be four. Um, yep, right there. One, two, three, four. One is buried by Scout Leader Sycamore, <laughs> who takes root, spends the re-roll, and gets through the stand-up roll. So no more re-rolls for for the mood here in this half." Boy. Nuffle, <laughs> Nuffle, not, <laughs> not being too kind to the moot here. <laughs> it's hard enough as a halfling coach as it is. Do they have to fail all their take roots? <laughs> all of their stand up rolls. Here we go. Another halfling toss. Is he going to target the ball carrier? I think he is. Doesn't hit his target, but will land right next to him. Davey doesn't land on his feet, but doesn't get removed from the pitch. Didn't break armor. No doubt attempting to target the ball carrier there with his with Davey. If he would have connected, he would have knocked down homage. Dodges. Did he dodge? Chris to mark Czar? I think he did. He's not going to be able to use his dodge skill if he dodges away with Derek. Goes for the uphill blitz into double skulls. Oh, Davy. Oh, Davy. <laughs> Oh, Davey, no! <laughs> ah. 
Oh, roll double skulls. <laughs> he had to try something. Rolled into double skulls. Broke armor. And that's another halfling removed from the pitch. Turn five for the Knights of Nuffle. SP Beaver says, where was this Nuffle last time I played Mootland? You, you don't pray enough, sir. <laughs> you need to pray to Nuffle. <laughs> you respect Nuffle. <laughs> there you go, good. Good, you're on the right track. <laughs> four man, four man player advantage? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Four man player advantage for the Knights of Nuffle now. Unless something, something really goes awry here. They're not gonna have uh, too tough of a time scoring here with this defensive TD. They'll probably wait, wait it out until turn eight. Takes a blitz with air, moves him down pitch. Gets some protection on the ball carrier with Knack, everyone's favorite video game. Two die block. This is with, uh, was it with Czar? It's with Czar, so we'll get the uh, dodge skill, dodge push there. But he dodge pushes into Rit, he'll get another block out of this. SP Beaver says has to worry about the lightning bolt. Yes, indeed he does. I don't know if Artificial Bunny really wants to waste it here, though, but you're absolutely right. A wizard is an inducement. That's what this little spell book is here that you can take. And that means somewhere in the stands, you've hidden a wizard. And once per game, that wizard can cast one of two spells, either a fireball or a lightning bolt. A fireball affects a three by three grid. And every player in this grid, friend or foe, has to roll a d6 on a four plus to get knocked down and have to go through the, the knockdown uh, routine of armor breaks and injury rolls and such or a lightning bolt and a lightning bolt affects just one space on the pitch but it only requires a two plus to knock down both down result he wrestles them to the ground well done if he didn't he would have he would have been knocked down and Timmy Jr. would have remained standing due to the block skill. Turn six for the moot. Three turns left. He is just hoping for some mercy here. And he'll try to pull it, pull it together in the second half. He is going to toss Chris the halfling going after homage. <laughs> Just overshot him by a little bit. <laughs> Gets a stun on Chris. So long as he stays on the pitch, I don't think he minds too much. Went for the toss, was just a little high on the toss here. Breaks armor with the uh, the block by the number one treeman gets a stun out of it. <laughs> oh no! Tried the stand up blitz with assistant leader Twiggy, but failed that stand up roll yet again. So not only does he not get the stand up the treeman, he has spent his blitz for the turn. Two GFI has to move Timmy Jr. down pitch. The two remaining standing halflings are going to move toward the right wide zone. Oh, he GFI'd. He pressed his luck on the GFI and got a stun. 
three GFIs in a turn? How dare you? How dare you, Nuffle says. Advances homage down, pitch to the 16 yard line over in the right wide zone. SPB says, remind me again, one of the best big guys in the game. Treatman, man. <laughs> Going for the blitz on Timmy Jr. He's looking to get a three die blitz out of this. Three die blitz. Both standing or a push. Or a reroll. He's going to go with the push. Probably, yeah, probably doesn't follow up. He needs somebody available just in case Artificial Buddy does decide to pop the lightning bolt. SP Beaver says, I would agree with this. And in fact, I do. What do you agree with? Elena Bruno says, definitely Treeman. All right, that, that works out. That works out. Oh boy, Timmy Jr. getting surrounded by angry Bretonians. A number of players around homage at this point. I don't think Artificial Bunny is going to is gonna waste the wizard here in this half. Once again, you know what? <laughs> Dead Freddy. Dead Freddy called this. <laughs> Assistant leader Twiggy. You know what? I don't think he can't get up. I think he just doesn't want to get up. <laughs> I think he is lazy. <laughs> Two die blitz by Deeper and Strong Branch against Gnarly, the number three blitzer. Gets a dodge push out of this. That's the most tree movement we've seen all game so far. <laughs> I I don't like trees on a on a wood elf team. That's that's for sure. I don't mind them, I guess, but I I don't prefer them. Three good dodges to take a mark on homage because what else are you going to do? Turn seven for the Knights of Nuffle now. They'll almost certainly get a three die on Timmy Jr. And then uh, try to hold out one more turn and score on turn eight. Three die blitz. Gonna get the knockdown here due to tackle. Attack on the gates, dodge. Doesn't break armor. Timmy Jr., he is, he is the hero. He's gonna stay on this bitch. You can't remove him. He saw you take out all of his friends. Now he's he's powered up. Decides not to wait till turn eight. Scores here on turn seven. Well done by Clampies and the Knights of Nuffle. One to zero the score. Artificial Bunny is going to get a turn to score here. He can score in one turn. If he can. Well, Nuffle giveth and Nuffle taketh away. <laughs> Both knocked out halflings are going to come back onto the pitch. The Moot's gonna have one more shot here in the first half to be on offense. One turn to score. They can score in a single turn. 
They can do throw teammate, say with deep root here. The maximum distance on a throw teammate throw is a short pass. So that's a quick pass. That's a short pass. Done. Then he has five. Whoop, not done. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> done. Then he can move his. Uh, t no, I had this right the first time. I can do math. Here we go. Right here. Then if the halfling lands on his feet, he can go five on his normal movement and then two GFIs to score in a single turn. But that is a lot of die rolling just just for that alone on a on an empty pitch. But he's also going to have to probably dodge and probably have some negative modifiers on some of these rolls as well. El Nubrina says, on a blitz, the Knights could score again. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's true. SP Behavior praying to Nuffle and lowering the GFI failure rate from 900% to a measly, a paltry 99%. Boot Polish says, with sixes, everything is possible. That is true. Believe in Nuffle. Believe in the sixes. 10 seconds set up on defense here. That will be the defensive formation. The moot to set up for the last time this half. Well, unless they score, I suppose. <laughs> Three trees on the line. Knack. Knack will be the marking player. Surprised he's not moving a tree over to take out Knack. I guess he can do it with the halflings, it's fine. But he needs to keep deep root clear in order to throw. This means he can't block with deep root, and he needs to keep a halfling available. That's gonna be Josh, it looks like. Looks to be Josh. All right. First order of business will be to pick up this ball. Here's the kick. No doubt a deep kick. Stays on the pitch. Well done. Yes, indeed. Ball lands in the right wide zone on the 18-yard line. The Moot has to pick this ball up. A three-plus pick up of the ball to a handoff. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. I don't think he can get this. Yeah, I don't think he can get this. Takes a three die block here against Knack. He'll get the knockdown. Looking for an eight plus. Gets a KO at least. We'll see if that holds next half. Kick. Kick, one of the most underrated skills, I think, in the game of Blood Bowl. Clifey's making good use of the skill here. Final block on the line, gets a push. It's good use of the skill here to stop, stop any chance at a score. Kick allows you to kick uh, very accurately compared to, to a non-skilled kick. By placing the ball over here, there's nowhere for this ball to go. So he could pick the ball up. He could pick the ball up here. That's three movement. Four, five, let's say he gets both GFIs, he's here. He needs to get the ball in the hands of this fella here. Now, if he, say, hands off here, he can't get the ball in the hands of this fella uh, unless he passes. But if he passes, then he can't pass with deep root. Handoff, pass, and blitz. Handoff, pass, blitz, and foul are once per turn actions. You can only do it one time per turn. Yeah. 
I'm surprised he's moving players forward. <laughs> I would run them all away. <laughs> There's the foul attempt. Two assists on the foul. Got an injury out of it. It worked out. Well done. Oh, well, he got sent off the pitch. But a uh, pretty decent trade there. I think if you can remove a player from the pitch, even though it was a lowly lineman, uh, I think uh, not not a bad trade. Well, <laughs> except for the fact that he's running out of players. <laughs> got called off the pitch on the foul. You did it right in front of the ref. What made you think he wasn't going to see that? But did get a removal out of it. Two permanent removals against the Knights of Nuffle. We'll see if that knocked out player stays knocked out. Three dive engines block. Only gets a stun out of it. Not much else to do here. No more blocks to take. He might just call it a half. Unless he's planning on fouling. Nope, that'll be it. One to zero to score at the half. The Knights and Ethel in the lead. They will be on offense to start the second half. We'll see what the Master Chef does here. Artificial Bunny hoping for three rerolls stolen. I hope that chef is cooking up something delicious. Because they need those rerolls. Number 13 is going to come back onto the pitch. He got two. That'll have to be good enough. So four re-rolls for the moot. Knights of Duffel are down to one re-roll for the rest of the game. So I think this will be 11v9. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 v 10. One man player advantage for the moot here. They're going to be on defense. Hank the Ranger says, impossibly overtime. That's right. We're in the Blood Bowl. This is a single elimination bracket. There are no ties anymore. If there's a tie at the end of turn 16, we're going to overtime. It'll be a new coin toss, just like you're starting a new game. Um, and then you'll, you'll set up as if you were setting up for a new half. You'll get eight more turns to score, although it will be sudden death. The first team to score within those eight turns will win the game. But crucially, you will not get back your rerolls like you would at the start of a normal half. So whatever rerolls you have going into overtime, that's what you got. Unless uh, Nuffle elects to give you some more on the kickoff event. Paul says, I have a sickening feeling halflings will do work this half. <laughs> we shall see. Three man line. Wow. Look at all these linebackers giving up the wide zones. Mootland Scout Troop does not have a kicker. Seven players on the line for the Knights of Nuffel. Eight players on the line for the Knights of Nuffel now. Just two, two players set back to receive. Oh, I thought he was going to put that ninth up on the line. <laughs> Both wide zones full now. Giving up mid-pitch as well, but it's deep root there. He can only move two, four if he wants a GFI. Although he could just get out of the way. Did I make facts for this game? Let's see if I made facts for this game. Let's see. What did I what did I do? Nope. <laughs> that kind of works. <laughs> Here's the kick. Brilliant. Oh, no. Artificial Bunny did not want this. Brilliant coaching and both. Wow. What a deep kick. I don't know if he wanted that either. 
Brilliant coaching. Each roll equally. You can see you roll a D6 plus your fame plus your the number of coach assistants you have. Mulan rolled three. Two plus fame for the Knights of Nuffle was a three. That means both players will get that kickoff result. And while Mulan's scout troop goes up to five rerolls, that's a lot of rerolls. Really, he wants the Knights of Nuffle to not have rerolls, and he's picked up he's picked up a second one here. Gets the nap down on scout leader Sycamore. Gets the two die block against assistant leader Twiggy here. He's gonna get the knockdown as well. Didn't break armor. Elding Bruno says he can toss a halfling and try to sneak that deep kit. I like that for Moot. We'll see if that's what he tries. <laughs> that would be so hype. <laughs> so hype. If he tosses, <laughs> if he tosses a halfling, I think <laughs> if somehow the Knights of Nuffle don't recover this ball and he tosses a halfling and gets it, that would be really hype. Three plus ball pickup works out. Mnemonic, the number two blitzer. He's going to advance forward to the 22 yard line over in the left wide zone. Teeny Esperanto, welcome to the stream. Just tuned in and Nuffles finally being merciful. If that's uh, if that's what you want to call mercy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> SP Beaver says uphill halfling blitz to score. <laughs> I no, I don't I don't think so. <laughs> Two die block push result against Freddy. Freddy used to be an actor. He was a horror actor. Best known for his role in the in the Halloween series. Now he's a Blood Bowl player. Oh, did I say Halloween? I'm sorry, I got that wrong. I meant Friday the 13th. Oh, did they say Friday the 13th? I'm real sorry. I meant Texas Chainsaw Massacre. What a career upgrade. Turn nine for the moot. I mean, it's a pretty big upgrade from <laughs> being burned alive by parents <laughs> in a school in a school boiler room. Here comes the, the lightning bolts. Gets a KO on Mnemonic. I think he might be going for the halfling toss here. That seems too far. <laughs> it seems way too far. So diagonally, he's only going to be able to move or throw to here. And then that's one, two, three, four, five. Two GFIs gets him to the 22 yard line. Here's the toss. Doesn't land on his feet. Spends the re-roll, doesn't land on his feet. That's a turnover and gets stunned. <laughs> oh no, it's a, it's a halfling toss. It's not a turnover, I'm sorry. There's no turnover on the, if, uh, if the player doesn't land on his feet. I mean, the, at best he could have picked up the ball, but he was gonna get murdered. <laughs> he was gonna get murdered. <laughs> maybe he was just hoping uh, Blodge would keep him alive, maybe? Maybe that was the play? Two die halfling blitz, how dare you? Gets the pal, doesn't break armor on neck. Neck pretty fragile as well, is AV of seven. Assistant leader Twiggy finally decides to stand up in this game. It's not the Dungeon Bowl final, but that's fine. <laughs> we'll fix that for game two. <laughs> 45 seconds left in turn nine. Two GFIs to Mark Wrestle. Oh boy. Failed to take root roll with Scout Leader Sycamore, but successfully stands up. So Scout Leader Sycamore will be taking root likely for the rest of the game. Or at the very least for the rest of the drive.
Good dodge. Second good dodge. Artificial Bunny getting aggressive here, going after the ball. Look at look at these sixes. My goodness. I don't know if you want to burn all your, your goodwill with Nuffle on GFIs and dodges. <laughs> Got another six there. Turn 10 now for the Knights of Nuffle. My goodness gracious. One to zero, the score. The Knights of Nuffle, seven turns, hopefully remaining in the ball game. Clyphus is probably thinking to himself. Wants to close this out on turn 16. He definitely doesn't want to go to overtime, especially with the threat of the one turn touchdown. The winner of this match will be advancing to face off against Doug the Minotaur's Dinner Bell Darlings with a very impressive record. I believe it was 23-0-3 this season. Very well done. Spike Magazine Trophy Champion. Good dodge by Gnarly to get the three die block. Got the pal on Derek. Is Derek going to stay on the pitch? A seven plus will break armor. Broke armor. And Derek's not going to stay on the pitch. See ya. See ya, Derek. <laughs> Doug the Minotaur says, ties are for chumps. <laughs> Food Polish says, I hope the three of those wins. <laughs> Good ball pickup by Russell, the number six blocker. Artificial Bunny out of resources at this point. Other than his four re-rolls, he's really just kind of hoping Nuffle, <laughs> Nuffle helps him out here. Nuffle, take the wheel. Forty-four seconds to go for the Knights of Nuffle. Expect more of the same this turn. Uh, not this turn, this half rather. It's going to be trying to, to take those marks, get those blocks. Um, he might not necessarily wait until turn 16 to score. If he can go up two to zero um, late in the half, he's probably in good shape. But if he can stall it out till turn 16, why not? Dodging away from scout leader Sycamore. Doesn't want to take a block on him and, and unroot him. Takes the two die uphill. He's going to get a push. Stand firm means when you get pushed, you can choose to use stand firm and not move. Is he going to try that again? He's going to try to dodge away instead. This time fails to dodge. Not going to waste one of his two rerolls on it. Now it'll be a turnover. Turn 10 for the moot. Can Artificial Bunny get anything going here? Oh, Halfling's very, very hard to play. Um, I don't think they're... I mean, they're definitely at the bottom of the tier list, but they're not... They're not rock bottom. <laughs> like, we're not talking ogres. <laughs> we're not talking vampires, I think. They're they're still pretty, pretty tough to play, though. A very hard team to see success with. And that's thanks to to I mean, look at the stat line on a half like MA of five is eh. Strength of two is not good. AG three is fine. AV six is horrible. <laughs> it's really tough. What they have going for them is how how inexpensive they are and the access to um, to usually getting lots of inducements each game. At least that's what they want to target. They really want to get be below TV by a by a few hundred, a few hundred thousand gold in order to pick up key inducements like deep root strong branch and get that third tree. Speaking of, here's a toss. Doesn't land on his feet. That's a five plus landing. That's tough. Is he re-rolling it? He is re-rolling it. And gets a stun out of it. That'll be a turnover. 
wants to pick up deep root. He wants to pick up the. I'm sorry, it's not a turnover. It's a, it's a halfling toss. <laughs> he wants to pick up deep root. He wants to pick up the halfling master chef. It costs other teams 300k to pick up the chef. Halflings get a discount. It's only 100k for them. Those are the two key uh, key inducements. He definitely wants to pick up, but uh, you also kind of want to be low enough where you're going to pick up a few more. Two die block against the ball. Oh, wow. Holy moly. Wow. Two die blitz. It was a both down result. Clypheus was deciding whether he wanted to wrestle down or not. He said, you know what? I'm not going to wrestle down. You have an AV of six. You're probably going to be removed. But it turned out Nuffle had other plans. Clifey is hoping the trade worked out. It did not. Three die block. It's a pal against Freddy. Break armor gets a stun out of this. Freddy used to be an actor best known for his role uh, as a, the, one of the two protagonists in the movie Titanic. Lovely movie. Three plus ball pickup. Failed the ball pickup. Has to spend the reroll here. He's down to one. Works out this time. Air with the pickup. Knights of Nuffle back down to one reroll. Air is going to move the ball across the line of scrimmage to the opposing two yard line over the left side zone now. Dead Freddy's demanding death. SB Beaver says one of the two protagonists did he play the iceberg. Well done. Well done. <laughs> he was the boat. <laughs> two die block against Harold. This will be a dodge push. Follows up to continue marking Harold. Turn 11 for Mootland Scout Troop now. Boy, boy, most of their team is now behind the ball. He went in aggressive on that ball. Takes a blitz against Omash. He'll get the knockdown. He'll follow up for one. He'll have one more point of movement before dipping in the GFIs. He's probably going to mark the ball carrier here. There's the mark against air. I'm disappointed at the weather. I have to say this nice weather, not cutting it for me, not cutting it for me. One minute, 15 seconds left in turn. Number 11 in this ball game, this first game of this championship competition. When you're at this game, advances to the upper bracket. Takes a block against Nave. Can't follow up due to being rooted. Harold, the number 10 halfling, he is currently in the safety position. He's going to run away from Nick. Two good dodges, the third one. <laughs> Three good dodges. <laughs> Failed the GFI, because that's what you always fail. <laughs> got a three plus, got a three plus. Can't get that two plus, though. <laughs> Takes a mark on, a second mark on air. 
Thank the ranger. It lowers the GFI failure rate from 900%. That is the mathematically accurate percentage. GFI, when you uh, when you move in this game, uh, you get your movement allowance. In this case, Andy Jr. has a movement allowance or MA of five. That's how many spaces you can move in a turn. In addition to your movement allowance, you can move up to two extra spaces. Each of those are called going for it. In the latest version of the rules, they call it a rush, uh, but they work the same way. For each additional space you want to move, you roll a d6. If you don't roll a one, you can move in that space. If you roll a one, you will fall on your face in that space. And so uh, if you do the math, if you do the calculus, if you do the next level calculus, a one in six chance of failure works out to 900%. Wow. Knights of Nuffle rolling into double skulls has to spend the final reroll here to get the pow on Timmy Jr. My goodness. Knights of Nuffle with no rerolls left for the game. Might be going for the blitz here with number one. I don't know if he wants to risk the dauntless roll though. Let's see, three, four, five, six. I think you might want to get the other assist in there to just ensure it's going to be a two die block. Well, that's the way to do it. <laughs> Goes for the dauntless roll anyway. <laughs> Gets a foul. <laughs> He'll get the knockdown against assistant leader Twiggy. Doesn't follow up, he'll stay put. <laughs> and the ball carrier will move down to the opposing 16 yard line. He's now in scoring position. Takes a second mark on a Deep Root Strong Branch. Final turn of the third quarter. The Moot fails to stand up the number two Treeman. <laughs> SP Beaver <laughs> believes an uphill block's about to about to happen. <laughs> Final turn of the third quarter. Mootland Scout Troop down to two rerolls for the game, but Crucius, Crucius, Cru <laughs> Crucius. <laughs> Crucially, Clypheus <laughs> has none left for the game. <laughs> El Nubrino says you can tell the Lizardman coach by the uphill blocks. You sure can. <laughs> Poopa says flying halfling. Oh, that would be such a tough throw. He's he's got to get a half to deep root somehow, <laughs> and then and then it's just oh yeah, failed dodge. That's a turnover. Fourth quarter begins. The Knights of Nuffle in the lead, one to zero. The score. Will he decide to score while he can? Or is he going to try to stall this out for a few turns? I might stall this out. I might cage up and then stall it out. Wizards off the table. Well, the, well, I don't know if I would. How many rerolls left? Let's say you go up two to zero. Let's say Artificial Bunny scores on turn 13. And then you get the ball back for three more turns. Man, I would just score. I would just score. Three die block gets a push out of this. 
Tries to get a blitz. Is he going to score? He is indeed. Well done. Two to zero. The Knights of Nuff will increase their lead and praise the sun. Well done. Yeah, I think that was the right play. Score while you can. Your odds are all jacked up now with no rerolls. And who knows? Maybe you get a reroll here. Boy, I didn't even realize that Artificial Bunny has... T Whoa! <laughs> that was, that's like super injury. It's taken out three players into the into the casualty box. SP Beaver says, but the trees are back in a position to hit you. Yeah, but but you're still you're still the bashy team in the matchup. You can still murder halflings. And if he scores, you'll be on offense for three turns. You you can stall that out, right? You can stall that out, no problem. Two-point lead for the Knights of Nuffle. It's looking grim here for the Mootland Scout Troop. We'll see if they can get something going. I would say in virtually every matchup that we've seen the Mootland Scout Troop play, they, they were almost always the underdog um, and still Artificial Bunny being able to Bring them all the way to the Blood Bowl is is very, very commendable. Uh, I absolutely could not do it. <laughs> There's no way. I couldn't do it with Undead! <laughs> and they're great! <laughs> so uh, hats off to Artificial Bunny for really putting in the work with this team and showing the, that you can be successful with Halflings. <laughs> Bootball says, as long as elves, dwarves, and halflings lose, they'll be happy with the Blood Bowl. <laughs> that leaves one team. <laughs> Artificial Bunny going to set up his team here. Perhaps for the last time. We'll see. Here's the kick. Quick snap. Every player for the Mootland Scout Troop gets to move in uh, one space. He'll definitely try to pick this ball up. This uh, significantly increases his odds for retrieving the ball. He'll get a roll here, and if he fails, then he'll start his turn like normal, and he'll get a roll again. Yep, there's Harold getting under the ball. Advances deep root strong branch across the line of scrimmage. See if he advances all three trees across the line of scrimmage. Indeed he does. So he's going to try to shove the line to the right, suggesting he may be moving to the left. Good pickup. Turn 13 for the moot now. He can definitely he can definitely go for this one turn. It looks like he's going to try to do just that. GFI to a handoff. Good GFI. Good handoff. SP Bear with the emergency GFI warning. I think Artificial Bunny heard it loud and clear. There's that block. Setting up the pass with Deep Root Strong Branch. Can he make it happen? Get a one-turn touchdown. Can we see another one from this team? Here comes the throw. Needs to be the max distance. Doesn't land on his feet. Spends the reroll. Fails the landing. 
and get stunned. <laughs> Turn 14 for the Knights of Devil. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It worked almost every time. I think it literally worked once, <laughs> maybe twice. <laughs> Going for the block on Freddy. Breaks armor here. Freddy is stunned. Freddy just stunned there. He's, he's a lot more resilient than he looks. He, uh, Used to star on a TV show called American Gladiators. Spends one more point of movement on the Blitz with air. If you're unfamiliar with the Blitz in Blood Bowl, a Blitz is basically a move and a block all rolled into one turn. You'll spend one point of MA to take your block, but otherwise it's a way to move and block it um, with a single player and it's one of the once per turn actions in the game. Three plus pickup is successful. Mnemonic recovers this ball, the ball back in the hands of the Knights of Nuffle. They're gonna try to win this one three to zero. <laughs> SP Beaver says I would start fouling with my good players and hope for a call up. You mean uh, Clypheus? Yeah, maybe so. Double skulls. That's a turnover. All right. Turn 14 for the Moodland Scout Trip. They're running out of time here. They need to tie this game in three turns. They're down by two. Gets an injury on Nick. Clifus at this point just doesn't want any of these injuries to be Miss next game. <laughs> Doug Vinatar says, can we get some Miss next games, please? <laughs> Going after the ball carry here on the quick pass. Got it. Got him. Oh, one of my favorite moves. I gotta tell you, Artificial Buddy has done some of my favorite plays in Blood Bowl ever. <laughs> I love, I love the halfling, like, like, ammo toss. And, uh, passing the grenade around <laughs> with, <laughs> with a grenadier. Also love that as, as well. Dude, I block. It's the pal against Sar. Needs a nine plus to break armor here. He's got it. Wow. Hit Ed with a turkey leg. Got a stun. I don't think that would hurt that much. Good recovery here by Artificial Bunny. It's ball in the hands of Andy Jr. <laughs> Assistant leader Twiggy's going to take root over in the left wide zone. But goes with both down result to unroot himself, and that's a turnover. Turn 15 for the Knights of Nuffle. This may very this is looking very much like the penultimate turn of the game. Tacky on speed says, now that's a sack. <laughs> Takes a mark on poor old Harold. <laughs> 
Two die blitz. It's a push result. He has no rerolls here. He'll get a push. The ball's going to remain in the hands of Andy Jr. And Grinch says it could be a ride if there's a touchdown. Indeed, there could. Turn 15 for the Moot. They are not in scoring position. Well, I guess actually they are in scoring position if they go for the pass. Yeah, <laughs> he could... He could chuck him, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Going for the pass. Can he land on his feet? <laughs> oh, boy. That is hard. <laughs> well, that's a six plus. Andy Jr., no. Needed a six on that. He spent the reroll because why not? It's turn 15. Got injured. That's a turnover. I respect, I respect the effort. <laughs> See ya, Andy. <laughs> Turn 16 for the Knights of Duffel. They are up two to zero. Looks like they're gonna win this one in advance. SP Beaver says, what do they make the turf out of? Uh, I think they made it out of half weights. <laughs> Breaks armor here. Gets a stun, well done. Junior Assistant Scoutmaster Hank is stunned. Dude, I block gets a push against Derek. Dude, I block gets the pal this time against Derek. Looking to get some SPP here. Gets a stun out of it. Three die blitz against Harold. He's gonna get the knockdown due to the tackle skill. It breaks armor. You know what? You know what? Move, move Nave out of the way. Give, give artificial buddy some option. <laughs> Just let him, let him go for it. <laughs> Tried to pick up the ball with air, failed to pick up ball. Scattered in the hands of the lineman, and the ball would scatter. On the 10 yard line, final turn of this ball game. We'll see what Artificial Bunny does here. Very good showing by Artificial Bunny this season. Well done with this team in the Dungeon Bowl. Came in second place in the Dungeon Bowl. That's how he advanced here to the Blood Bowl. Unfortunately, he's gonna be eliminated here in the lower bracket, not before injuring Knack. And Clypheus, the current league champion, will be advancing to the upper bracket. Minute 25 left in this ball game. Here comes a blitz. Two die blitz gets a power against mnemonic. Can he injure a blitzer? He cannot. Hey, assistant leader Twiggy stands up. Well done, buddy. <laughs> Tried the five plus pickup, didn't work out, and that's the ball game. The Knights of Nuffle are going to advance to the Blood Bowl semifinals. Well done to Clypheus. Clypheus stays alive. He's going to try to to win back to back season championships here. But he's still got a long way to go. Doug the Minotaur is going to be his next opponent. Two to zero the score here. 
And you can see the Knights of Nuffle didn't have the ball all that long. They've been on defense most of this game, uh, but when they picked up that ball, they were able to score. Mootlin Scalp Troop just had the ball for 12% of the game. SPP for tonight, 17 for the Knights of Nuffle. Well done, Mootlin Scout Troop. Uh, they're picking up, what, eight, nine, 10, 13? It doesn't matter, it's the end of their season. Uh, but really, really well done by both coaches. Again, Halfling's a very hard team to play. Brett team, not so, not so easy either. Um, but but Halflings, I think everyone would agree, we're definitely the underdogs here. And Artificial Bunny being a fantastic coach really, really showed us what you can do with Halflings. Again, advancing here to the, to the Blood Bowl, putting on a good show. And uh, I think played the game uh, very, very well. Let's see if my bracket code works, shall we? Nope, it doesn't. Let's not. <laughs> You'll just have to trust me. <laughs> the Knights of Nuffle are advancing to the upper bracket. <laughs> oh, boy. So I wrote the bracket code for, for this season, and this is the first time I got to see it in production. And it, <laughs> we'll fix that for next time. <laughs> oh boy, what a great game. We've still got more to play. We've got two semifinal matches. We've got a consolation match, and then of course we have the, the championship game to play here in Blood Bowl number three. And those are going to start to be scheduled starting tomorrow. Uh, and when those games get scheduled, you'll be able to check out and get alerted to those schedules on our website at mammal.club. That's M-A-M-L dot C-L-U-B here on Twitch or on our social media pages on Twitter, Mastodon, and Facebook. You can listen to our podcast, Mammal Talk, in your favorite podcast app. And you can also watch our previous games on our YouTube channel. Man, play Blood Bowl. Play Blood Bowl, man. Where else? <laughs> where else can you be Freddy, Freddy Krueger? You know, the guy... <laughs> the guy from uh, that television show Friends. Where else can you be Freddy Krueger on a team full of of giant trees that are football players? <laughs> I love this game. This game is so much fun. You can play Blood Bowl via Blood Bowl 2 and Blood Bowl 3 on Steam and in tabletop form at your friendly local game store. Until the semifinals, folks, take care and enjoy the rest of your week.